Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 18. So, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter again the disciples of the Lord went on to the high priest. Underline the word breathing, threatening, and slaughter. He was not killing nama nama. He was slaughtering human beings. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Breathing, threatening from the slaughter of the saints of God. An evil murderer went to the high priest to ask for another letter to add to his act of atrocity. If you think Nigeria is in danger today, you should have been alive when Saul of Tarsus was Saul. It was not a hidden thing. He was getting official authorization. The king and the high priest to slaughter people. The word, the Bible used it, slaughter. That means to do damage to lives and kill them with no regard. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was slaughtering them. There's a place in Benin called Slaughterhouse. Jabacho. It's a place, any animal that goes there is bad bye for the rest of his life. In the town where Saul of Tarsus lived, every Christian was faced with death unless God made them escape. But look at verse 2. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to synagogue, that if he found any of this, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Remember that evil does not know sex. Male or female. The Bible says here, we are due for slaughter. And anyone he has not killed on the way, he will bound them hand and feet and carry them to Jerusalem, tied, getting ready to be slaughtered. By three. We are talking of life this morning, of a man. The lives of men in a man's hand. Verse three. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly... Yes, shine ran about him a light from heaven. Somebody should shout for me. As he journeyed, as he journeyed, as he journeyed on the way to Damascus, there shined a light from heaven. For the rest of the year, light is coming to your house. And the Bible used the word here, suddenly. Some of the most dramatic, inexplainable miracles that happen in a man's life happen not notified. And I believe that the next good thing to happen to you shall be sudden. I say shall be sudden. Something good is going to happen to you suddenly. Not on the way to Damascus, not on your way to slaughter, but as you look up to the author and finisher of your faith, something sudden is going to happen good for you. Verse 4, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, So, so, why persecutest thou me? Saul didn't know he was slaughtering men and persecuting God. Jesus didn't say, why are you killing me? Because you can't kill God. You are persecuting me, you are killing my people. What the word in Greek there, persecuting me, means putting a hindrance, an obstacle to the road my people are taking. And you are not giving power to do that. 
Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Persecution is a disturbance to your peaceful life. That's what it stands for. Now listen to this. Jesus said, you told you we're doing it to my men. And you know that anytime anybody persecuted you, he was persecuting God. Some of you come from family. Once you say you are a Christian. Oh God, I wish you know. Dr. Bazel and Professor Hoya can tell you in this town how many people would pay school fees for. Who were driven by their family. They just abandoned them to us and say, you have entered Jesus. You are no more member of this family. When they were in religion, nobody persecuted them. When they found light, oh Lord. You greet somebody and say, you are in Hallelujah church. No. But say you are a Christian to say, hey, yeah, but we are not like you. Because only we can say, oh, Boni, you are wrong. Hot fellow, you are wrong. Free Maisie, you are wrong. The rest of them say, we are all one. How many of you know we are not one? Darkness and light, are they one? Sickness and health, are they one? Good and bad, are they one? Joy and sorrow, are they one? No! People say, we are all one. We are not all one. We are one in separate ways. We have one God. Verse 5. He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick your foot against the stones. And I look at me, everybody, with your eye. Of expectation of good things coming from God through me to you. Anybody who hits you from now is going to kick against the stone. And the Bible says you cannot do that and shout. Hosanna. You cannot knock your hand to a rock and say, I'm so glad I did. Anyone that tried to hit you from now shall have pain in their life. Actually, any other eye you too much for evil shall not have the joy of the day. Because they are not only eyeing you, they are eyeing the agent of God. And that's why you must do good so that people will not eye you too much. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. The difference between prosecution and persecution. When what you are doing is leading to why you are being persecuted, you are being prosecuted. But if you are not doing anything wrong, and people are just for their own ill will sake, fighting you, they are kicking against the bricks. And God said that is very hard. I don't believe that if a thief is caught and beaten to death, is persecuted. I think he deserves his killing. And said so if he's an armed robber. As I said last time, any any armed robber that will lay you must not will lay any other person. You didn't hear that. If anybody will lay you, that is the last time he will lay anybody. Because in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And we are giving power and authority to bind and to lose. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now my lesson starts from verse 5. Now verse 6 says that. And then he said. And he trembling and astonished said. Lord what would thou have me to do? Sit down. Are you ready now? Now fasten your seatbelt. Some of you think when you come to church that the person you are to listen to is the person who is a redundant user. The church. Or some of you say, I don't want to offend anybody. I met them there. I spent years telling my wife in the work of God there's seniority in the area of operation. But don't let anybody say, I came before all that. Bini has a parable that that fowl in Juju place is not going to eat sacrifice. I'm not going to allow other people to eat it. Again, I. So many churches have been destroyed by old fowl. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. I'm a gift discoverer, me. That's why I've been able to train 10,164 pastors now in 107 nations. Once I catch you, 
That man, stand up. My DG, former DG, now director of his own company. He used to sit down there near the window. His wife sits in the front, but he sits at the back. In the government, he's a director general two times, three times. A big man. But when he comes to the church, he just fold himself. He go to the back there. And he and I have been friends for 42 years. From 1954, we became friends. He would go and hide there. One day I say, come here. Make you to stand here. Here, back is good, but come forward. I say, I, um, I say, yeah, I know. Just be sitting there. All right? From the back to the front, from the front to the stage. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If you find a gift in the house of God, don't let them sit down doing nothing. If people sit down doing nothing, they will sit down doing something. Nobody is a vacuum being. Everybody has something to do. The same thing if you are in the church and this man is in the front. Let me use you for example. May God not let you be the type of example I'm saying. If he's in the front and he's not moving, don't queue behind him. They are what is called go slow on the road. If the person whose vehicle broke down is in your front, and you say until he moves, you are not going to move. You will not get to where you are going. So if you see a man who is not moving, first of all, go near him and say, How? The Lord bless you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Are you moving now? Okay. Now, how many of you also know there's what is called towing van? You can become a tower of the delayed. Saul of Tarsus said, Lord, number one, say, everybody say that. Who are you? Say that. Say it again. And the Bible says, the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus. Once he heard the word, Lorenz, I'm Jesus. The Bible says, Ah, uh -huh. have I been persecuting you? He said, Yeah. Lord, say that to everybody. Lord. What wilt thou have me do? Saul was a doer. Saul was a doer. Look at his record. A journey man to Damascus, a slaughterer, a killer, and a letter collector for more killing. Now you are calling me to your ministry. Are you going to call me to put me on the floor? The Lord bless you, Professor. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. All of us rust rubbing waste. Hallelujah. Sit down, Hallelujah. Busy, let's do here. Men who have no direction have no destiny. Never you ask any of my driver about that. Once we get to a go slow, I don't queue behind anybody. Because there are some vehicles that not only they don't go forward, they roll back. Maybe you have not seen that before. I've seen many people killed by the vehicle that roll back. And so once I look at somebody who's not moving, I say, driver, make a way. And thank God, I'm one of those that God favored using siren in this country. Once I siren, you're clear. You don't, you, don't, you don't delay me. You don't disturb me. You are not strong enough to be a hindrance to my forwardness. I move you from the road. You can use your own hand as a siren. Come on for road, make a pass. The person in your front that you can shout on, get out! It will first of all be threatened. It's going to clear. Because not many people have the voice of get out. Everybody is kotoi. And I concur and koto people never make progress. Lord, what will you have me do? That is the job God wants us to do. Questioning him. Why are we called? Some of you are in the church as having to sit down. Nothing. You are not only a sitter, 
a doer of nothing. You can never grow when you are doing nothing. Who will you have me do? Let us see what Jesus told him. Because we are getting near the message now. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no man. Hearing the voice and seeing no man, they stood speechless. Ah. Do you understand that? The man that journeyed with him. Everybody give me your eye. That means we can be many and dummy. Only one asked God question. Only one had a voice. The fact that everybody around you is on the floor, speechless, should not make you be afraid of speaking. Verse 9. Verse 9. And he was there three days. All right, verse 8 says, Saul arose from the earth, and when, when his eyes were opened, and Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat or drink. There's a drama there I will teach during the week, verse 8 to 9. When you see and cannot see, I will discuss that with you during the week. So let's jump to verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. Somebody hear me. Who is God sending somebody to now? Please talk back to me. Minister, talk back to me. Women, talk back to me. Choir, talk to me. The congregation, talk back to me. Saul. God is sending his prophet to the slaughter's house, to the murderer's house. God said, the man called Saul of Tarsus is now in the street called Straight. Oh, that God put you on a straight road. Some of you are in a Ben Street. Some of you are in a gully road. Saul so went, immediately he rose up from the ground. He went to a street called Straight. It is better to start life straight if you are going to start new life. Golly, 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 golly. Men and women who are not loose always think everybody is bound. In the street called Straight, you will find a man called Saul of Tarsus. He prayed. Who has turned to prayer meeting? Saul. Three days, three nights, no food, no drink. Praying. Huh? No sight. Praying. That must be a serious prayer. And God said, go to his house. Read verse 11 with me. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house. Ask when you get there. For one called Saul of Tarsus, behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias as coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> he's not only praying already, he's already seeing vision. And who did he see? Ananias. If you are going to tell me that the light of God cannot change a man, you have not changed. He saw in the vision you are coming. 
Your job is to go to him now. Lay your hand on him and pray for him that he may receive his sight. Let's see the answer. Then Ananias, Obazir, come here, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. Religious spirit. Verse 13. I have heard of this man, of many things, how much evil he had done to thy sins at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Mama and I have a Bible study here. What we hear of other people. You see, it's a prophet telling God. God said, This man is already praying, this man is already seeing vision. Your job now is to go to his house, lay your hand on him that he may receive his sight. What did Ananias say here? I have heard so many evil things. God, you don't know where we are in this town. <laughs> the man you are sending me to, he has not changed. Actually, the last I heard of him was this morning. What he had been doing is to kill your own he thought he was going to impress God. God. Uh, now, let's illustrate this. Abaza. You are Ananias. I'm God. Tell me what you have heard. I've heard so many things, the evil things this man has done. Come on, uh, Pastor. And he even has authority now to come and kill people here. This man. Yes. When was the last time you heard of him? Well, it's not too long, sir. Not too long. No, because I heard, heard that he had him. a letter. Of he has a letter in his hand to go and him. kill more people. Yes. That belong to me. Yes. That's the last time you heard of him. That's true. And everything you heard there is evil. That's what you, you are just telling me. Yes. Sir, of this man. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what you are saying is that you heard. He may be pretending, sir. He is even pretending yeah, now. Yes. <laughs> now, all you have heard of him is all he did. Yes. All he did. And he has a letter of authority even now that he is here. He's not here for a, for a game. He has He's not even changed. Work. No. It's He's just the letter is still in his pocket. <laughs> yes. He, even, even though he's still praying now. He's just waiting for us to come and so that he can trap us. That's what he's doing right now. Yes. So all that he's doing now is not the real thing. No. He's pretending. He's pretending. You are not sure he's safe. You don't know that man. He has not changed. We know him very well. He has not changed. No. He's still the same man you knew him to be before. That's true, sir. That's what you heard. Yes. And that's whom he is. Yes. All right. Now, can you listen to me, Ananias, my prophet? Listen to me, Ananias, my prophet. Man of God, holy man, soul winner, yes. evangelism, your supreme task. <laughs> That's true. Even though I'm sending you to his house, he has not changed. He hasn't changed. And what is the motto of this ministry? Evangelism, your supreme task. task. Yes. And now you are winning soul by what you have heard. Uh, those that are ready to repent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, not this one, not this one. No, this man is a, is a criminal. <laughs> he's already a, a slaughterer. A, oh God, he's a sorcerer, he's a slaughterer. Yes. He killed people. Yes. There's no hope for this one. Well, no, not only this a one. miracle. Unless a miracle. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Um, I have a apostle, superior man of God. Three days ago, I met him on the way. He was carrying letter exactly as you have said. He was going to go and kill my people. But I now said to him, enough is enough. I struck him down. He fell flat. And I told him what he's going to suffer for my name. He has, he has now met with me. I discussed with him 
And what I told you is that he's praying and he saw you in a vision. You come into his house to lay hand on his head. Are you willing to do that? Look at verse 14 whether you are willing to do that. Well. Now he has authority. That's what you know. Now that I know it's you saying it, I will go. Now, now look at verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias, this is not Saul now. Go thy way, for he said, chosen vessel unto me. Oh God, prophet, apostle, the man you are reporting to me is a chosen vessel unto me. If he did have a record of the past evil life, he will not preach how good I am to his generation. Tell him, I'm telling you now, he has, he's going to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he will suffer for my name's sake. But Augusta, go to his house. And Ananias went, to his, went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him, said, come on, read your Bible so know what to say. Brother Saul, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in thy way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, they fell from his eyes as it were it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Amen. Ah, oh God, what are what you heard? The Lord has changed all that. Ah, he's no more the same person. No, he has new, changed. The new person. He has received the Holy Ghost. Yes. He has received his sight. Yes. It's not a chosen vessel. That's true. But uh, let's do. Come, oh, come. I have heard no you know when you say to people hey, uh, uh, you <laughs> hey, 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 come Pastor Katrin come Professor Hoya come We are in the Bible this morning. What we hear of people's past, for three days you can ask mama, we have been discussing one subject. Everybody is here to look for God before looking for man. That's it. That's it. What brought you here? Anybody who wants to be a prostitute, there's Mission Road. That's true. There's Ubagwe. Anybody who paid taxi coming to Faith Arena is looking for God first. Your job is not to look at what they wear. Look now whom they are. Are you hearing me? And if we believe that our prayers ask us since I returned from abroad, if I have eaten food for the last five days, less than one person's food, for the last five days since I arrived, I have not eaten genuine food. My soul is in bitterness. We are not looking at people with the eye of God. We are looking at people I heard how many evil he has done. I heard how terrible this church is for former drunkards. This church, ask mama, when, we, when I nearly came from America, I organized the youth, Emmanuel Ekoragwa and the rest, to go to prostitute streets at Ubagwe. Bring them to church. You know who told me we cannot worship with those people? Elders. Ah, uh, You don't know that woman? Now, Ubagwe, how did you know her? 
<laughs> I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. How did you know that prostitute if you were not her customer? They say we don't why we don't this morning mama and I discussed. I said to her, I said, look at all those people who showed us prostitutes and showed us thieves. They are no more in the Lord. The people they told me about that they were prostitutes, they were thieves. They are now elders and pastors. And those who pointed their sin to us, when they see that I travel, they come to her and say, tell your husband, the church is smelly. Those prostitutes. And you know that about half of them joined Bartholomew in the choir, singing to the glory of God. And the wives of those who are sin discoverers, they're only having babies. Inactive, useless. The prostitutes, the thieves of Baze involved with you and I at the birth of this ministry. They were confessing everywhere. I used to steal, I'm no more a thief. I was a hard lord. Jesus met me. I suffered from Gloria. Papa prayed for me. Reverend lay hand on me. And my Gloria died. I'm well now. I'm going to follow Jesus all the days. And the sin discovered, I would say, eh, I heal. May God. Oh, one day we hope our Reverend will change. Oh, no. We want hope. Church is bringing sinners in. Jesus said, I came for who? Sinners. I came not for the righteous, but to turn those in darkness to light. Three days we have been discussing this scripture. Who is God looking for? A slaughterer of men. Look at the suddenness. Two mothers here. Look at the suddenness of the contact with Christ and the transformation. Saul prayed. So, see it, a vision. So, is my chosen vessel. For everyone that God has an assignment for, they will give them duty first. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying. Everybody God has an assignment for, they will always give them duty first. Huh? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The only reason why many charismatic, holy, ghost baptized, spirit-filled churches are empty and the church that tolerates sinners are having first mass, second mass, third mass, fourth mass, fifth mass, is that the people there who are in the hem of our faith says, we preach to you, God will save your soul. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Oh God. Obaze, Ananias, you heard so many evil. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, mm, I know. Father, the man you are sending me to now. And God said, go and meet him, he's your brother. Put your hand on him. He's going to suffer many things for me, for my name's sake. Go to him, call him brother. Thank God for a man who heard from God. He went there and said, Brother Saul, the Lord that appeared to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has also appeared to me and has asked me to come to you, lay hand on you, the scale of brain that will go out and the God of heaven will appear to you. My admonition to all of us this morning. See people whom God has seen. God met Saul on Damascus Road. Our judgmental spirit doesn't let us see. We are not even concerned on what has happened. We are only looking at their record of yesterday. Three days ago, Saul of Tarsus met Jesus on the way. Three days later, God says, my chosen vessel is praying and seeing vision. The people that have been in the church for 20 years have never prophesied. They are still saying, 
I heard. The word here is I heard, not I saw. I was told. That's what he said here. I was told how terrible. Question, how many of you came here to see God? All right, put your hand down. Be very serious now. This question is very tough. This very question is very, very tough. How many of you came to church to commit sin? Somebody is laughing at the back. <laughs> How many of you came here to commit sin? How many of you came here to serve God? If you came to serve God, stand to your feet. If we are going to go, we are going to forget how many cigarettes we saw in their hand yesterday. Nobody among them who smoked yesterday can smoke in the church now. And what they are hearing now with your prayer can help to change them tomorrow. Catch the fish before you wash it. Don't look for clean fish. All those fishes that are very clean, they are, that are on the surface of the water, they cannot come out of the water, out of the soup pot. Ariete, I am at Yahweh. The real big fish go to Potopoto. Poto. They go down. They don't dance. When we are students, when we play ball and we have injury, we go to river. Ikoba. We put it like this for fish to come and eat it. The real big fish, they don't come out. They know when they come, they are in danger. If you are looking for a big fish, go to the bottom of the river. The small fish, not yet there. Yes, I alone. What here you will, Wawa, Eladia, Waro, Wawa, or we? Ehen or Saga, Erun, okay, Vame. I have chosen him a vessel. I have chosen for three days. Mama has been hearing this from me every day. Let's look for chosen vessels. Who are still in where they ought not to be. And the Bible didn't say they should come to us. God said, go to his house. Go to a local's house. Go to a normal house. Go to a Webe house. Go to that as a little man house. Your brother, your sister who is serving in San Go. Don't wait for him to come to church. He's a chosen vessel. He's already busy doing something. Even though what he's doing is wrong. He is doing it because you have not given him a new job to do. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Once they see light, they will no more go back to darkness. I reminded you this morning, 90% of those who started with us as forestry and Iyaro, 90% that started this ministry with us, they are no more here. But they used to tell us, <laughs> one Morgan, but let me remember Morgan. Huh? You were too, you're in the same house. Morgan will say, Alagba, ah, Errorao, ah, I'm a, but God will say to me, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You are here this morning because a man who saw vessels heard the voice of God. God says, Saul have heard my voice. He has seen in a vision. He prayed. He prayed. He see the vision. He seen me. He heard my voice. I knocked him down to pick him up. The same man you knew as a slaughterer, he's going to suffer many things for my sake. I want us this morning to ask God to give us a new heart and the eye to see the chosen vessels. The one we are ignoring. Whether you believe it or not, the attendance of last Sunday was not like this. Because I was not here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It wasn't like this. 
persuading you to look for people, which the pastor is doing. Persuading you to go for your brothers and sisters, which is your job, is what has led us to where we are now. 123 branches holy service around Benin City right now of Church of God Mission. Let's go and tell sinners Jesus is Lord. Look at verse 17. Oh, verse Let's read. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus. Oh, why are these sheep loose? The Lord, even Jesus. That appeared unto thee. If I were God, I would not appear opposite to slaughter. But I'm not God. But now that I'm God's agent of miracle, I see you the way God sees you. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Lord that appeared unto thee has said to me, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. He received sight forth and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul, certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which call on his name in Jerusalem? And he that for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. Verse 23, and after that many days we have filled, the Jews took cancer to kill him. But their laying away was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciple took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Did you hear what I'm saying, Lawrence and Hoya? Mama, did you hear what I'm saying? All the elders... Look at the job of the church. Saul was already at the pulpit in synagogue proclaiming Christ. You know who was judging him still? The disciples. Is it not that same man? Hey, the church has finished. Huh? The church, the church has finished. The church has finished. Teaching in Sunday school, the church has finished. Preaching the gospel, the church has finished. Singing in the choir, the church has finished. That drunkard, that harlot, that prostitute, that evil man, that killer of people. Oh, Jesus, where are you before your church dies? I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Or as I look at Paul, a vibrant murderer now in the basket, see what he will suffer. No man would have been able to pull Saul in the basket to lean him through the wall. But I'm glad to tell you, all that were waiting for him at the gate, they waited in vain. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Let us be tolerant. Let us bear with God. Because we don't know what he has done in people's lives. Let us bury our judgmental spirit. Let us overlook what we think, people. What we were told. That is the actual chapter. That mama and I studied. I heard of how many evils he has done. Not he's doing, but has done. Let's not judge by what they did. Let us see what we can do to help them out of what they have done. Join hand with somebody on your left and right. Father, we bless these workers first. That their labor will not be in vain in your house. Their effort will not be lost in your house. Honor them with your presence and your power and your glory. And now we are asking, Lord, that you put your mouth in the mouth of your children to become the mouthpiece of God. 